Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. On Fridays, we talk about the product owner role in Scrum. We talk about patterns and anti-patterns that relate to ours and the team's collaboration with the product owner. And we've also put together a course to help you navigate that relationship. There's 18 modules, nearly eight hours of tools, techniques, videos, handouts, presentations you can use to help you and your team work better with your product owner. The course is available at bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. All lowercase, all one word, that's bit.ly forward slash coach your PO. And now on to the show, the product owner show. TJIF, everybody. Today is Friday, and we have with us, unfortunately, for only one more time, Youssef Fahoum. Hi, Youssef. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful this week. Absolutely. So today is Product Owner Day, and uh, we'll talk about a great product owner and what that looks like in a minute. But first, share with us what might have been potentially the worst product owner anti-pattern you've witnessed in your career. Product owner is boss or wannabe boss. So the culture was very much hair on fire. We have to get things done all the time and we don't know what's coming down the pike. That's why they were trying to do this act of information was to kind of ride her or get the, get the reins of, of runaway horse if they work. To go in well, with these, this team and there's actually two teams that this product owner was working with. Uh, and I quickly started seeing in, in the backlog refinements that stories were starting to be assigned by the product owner to certain people on the team. They were pre-filling in the estimation points sometimes, or when we had Scrum Poker, even though it was being, I was trying to facilitate it, they were doing things like, oh, that that's kind of like the other story we did. So, you know, it's probably a three. Everyone listening here should know or knows that when we say that to a group of humans and the person who's, say, especially the person who's saying it, holds some sort of large experience, experiential knowledge, or has, has power, you've already pre-programmed every person's limbic system in that room to say or not say their opinion because they want to go along with, the, with that with the person with power. And so it was, it was a little hairy, Vasco. I mean, this guy is already a very large, imp, imp, imposing character. And then the culture was there where it was just, he would, he would kind of guide and, and, you know, bully the team into doing what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the, the patterns I've seen with this kind of expectation of the role, meaning that, you know, I'm the PO, I'm the boss of the team. W- one of the patterns that I've seen is that these people eventually, even if not at first, they eventually get to the point where they think they know better than the team, right? Like, uh, especially if the PO has some coding and testing background, they'll say, no, 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 that's not how you do it, right? Like, yes. did that happen in that particular example? Did the PO start to kind of direct how you fix these things, kind of? Well, sure, you know, because they were a programmer or developer at one point, too. So even though I found out that that person had not been developing in like, you know, eight years. So yes, it was, it was very much of, I'm experienced because I've been on this team the longest, because there had been a lot of employee churn on this team, as I'm sure you can guess. Um, there's some of the reasons for that churn, but they had been in the longest and he had been, had a longer career experience. And so he just imposed his own credibility on the rest of the team. You know, it's hard to, to pull him away from that. I'm not sure if I ever did actually entirely, but eventually I think he started seeing the light and, and it is very hard for the folks to let go of some of that knowledge power kind of thing. How do we as Scrum Masters handle this type of situations? Because it isn't easy, right? Like you can't tell a person like this, you don't really know because that would fall flat immediately. So how did you handle it? The old me would have immediately gone into explaining what the product owner role is supposed to be and this is how we do it in Agile. But every environment is always a bit different and, and we don't know the history unless we've been there a long time ourselves. So now I would say as hard as it might be, try to start forming a relationship with that product owner, professionally, of course. You know, where, where was their history? Go to coffee with them, et cetera. If there's any one thing, one team dynamic on an agile team, when I talk to other scrum masters, I coach them or I express myself, 
the a high maturity level for a Scrum Master is what, how have they developed, or is there a good working relationship between the product owner and Scrum Master? You have to be a team with that product owner so that they see their role as, yes, owning the team backlog, so to speak, but they don't own the team. And getting them to eventually see that the team doing the work, you know, they're, they're the ones shoveling the dirt in the ditch. And it's hard to see that there's a gas line down there when we're standing up on the top of the road as product owners, Scrum Master. So let them go ahead and let us know what's going on. It's okay. We have to now turn around and look at our business owners and say, hey, we can't get to these stories, you know, um, without the capability, but we'll be able to get to it in two sprints. Start helping develop that product owner's own confidence. Some of this bullying a lot of times comes from a lack of confidence in what the role actually entails as being a team member of the actual team, but also representative of the business. And so just help them gain that confidence of what it means, how to negotiate with business owners. And as it turns out, this product owner actually had been in turn being bullied by stakeholders and business owners always wanting something. And probably used to it as a developer in the past as well, right? Correct. It was habits that were created a long time ago, and they're now just imposed on that role. And then he's, that person's got to project them back on the team to try and save face or, or to be safe, psychologically safe. And so it can be extremely hard, but that's the challenge of being a scrum master. Us also maturing, but maturing to where we recognize, well, I really have to have a relationship with this product owner. Yeah, I really like that that aspect of what you said, like no matter how hard it may seem, build a relationship with the PO, because even if you can't help the PO, you can help the person. And that's very important for us because we are dealing with people every single day. It's one of the most people centric jobs out there. Right. And, and, you know, for all of the scrum masters listening to us, if you don't like working with people, then this is not the right job for you, because sometimes you have to forget the roles because you need to help the people first. And, and in this case, if the PO had been bullied as a developer to accept everything coming down from above, they'll probably become the same when they become the PO, which then builds on the pressure towards the team because now they are being bullied and then they build, bully the team because that's how they were educated. That's what they learned to do, right? That it, it, we need to help the person get out of that pattern before we can help the PO become protective of the team. That's right. And, you know, when the team members come on, they're probably less experienced than the product owner because that person had a career being a developer and now they're in. So they can call a shot sometimes and they may know what's right and wrong, but you have to help them learn. Like, you don't have to tell them they're wrong in this instance. Let them figure it out because you also had to figure it out. Absolutely. We have to figure it out every single day. All right. But <laughs> there's more, right? Like sometimes we meet amazing product owners. So describe for us. Yousef, what, who, and or uh, how this product owner, this amazing product owner that you met might have been? You know, it's funny. Um, we, I came in, I dropped into the second or third post-PI scene. Imagine they've gone through the initial PI being a program increment or quarterly big room thing, some people do. And I came in after the second one. So imagine they're already gone through the first one where it's complete chaos. Yeah, everybody's like, I don't know if we should be doing this. It was nuts. And the second one gets a little bit better. And I get in the, towards the third one and we're standing up a new release train, a program train, and a few people, of course, going, I don't know if we need our folks to be there two days of planning. Actually, it's two and a half because we have people all over the globe. And so we just need to stretch that out for time zones, right? And uh, this one product owner, I'm not sure what happened, but she gravitated towards me. And even though she didn't agree with everything, she kept coming back to me to, to, to speak and speak with me about things. So I just took it and said, great, this is a success right here, right? Because at least we're still communicating. <laughs> I, it turns out that her teams, a couple teams that she was working with, there, there's constant chatter, email, phone calls, all this stuff. And she's always telling me, it's, it's this agile thing is always making me talk. I'm always on email. And I'm thinking, put it back in my, in my hip pocket. Okay, this is, this is going to change a little bit. We'll see if it, if it does, right? And after a while, it just took a couple months of helping her out, helping the team talk and, and getting things get rolling. She walks up to me with this huge smile on her face, like ear to ear. Oh my Lord, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I'm thinking, what did I do? She goes, Yusuf, I get it. I finally get it. What do you get? <laughs> she says, these two days, this is the first time she'd actually been both in both days, dedicated these two days have saved me literally days or weeks of nonstop communications because we planned it all out together 
And you know what happened last week? The next PI, she, she's a business person. She started using her budget to fly team members who are developers into PI location, not waiting for you know vertical territorial financial battles to happen. But she said, I'm, I will fly your people in because I need them there to talk to them. And she was a great PO in terms of her skills because she kept developing them, et cetera. But just to do that alone, to really be, and this is on my scale, my maturity scale of POs with Scrum Masters, that she stepped across the silos, across the water and said, I will do what I need to do to get the team members together so we can make this better. This story reminds me of the original exposure, I guess you could call it, that I had to big room planning. Uh, at that time, it was not called PI planning. It was called ART planning or planning seminar, as we called it in the company where I worked. And uh, we got people together. And uh, as I started to see, I mean, we organized everything and everybody had submitted their ideas for the, the PI. And, and it was called a train at the time, a meta iteration, right? Like it was 10 weeks, I believe it was. And uh, uh, I started seeing this interaction between people and, 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 you know, the questions being raised and the hands going up and, the, you know, the conversation happening in the corridors next to the coffee machine. And I go like, everybody thinks this is a planning meeting. This is not a planning meeting. This is a social network activation meeting. This is about getting people face to face to talk to each other about stuff that would take weeks of emails back and forth to get to an agreement. It really is about saving time. It's not about planning because you could plan in isolation or you know over whatever electronic tool of your preference. You could do that, but you can't really have that high bandwidth interaction, quick problem solving if you don't get people to meet each other. And guess what? When we go back to our offices, you in Australia and me in Helsinki, I can pick up the phone and call Yusef. Hey, it's nine o'clock here. It's 5 p.m. in uh, Yusef. He's probably still at work. Let me give him a call and uh, ask him about this thing. And if we had not met face to face, we could never do this. We wouldn't even feel that we could do it. We wouldn't even feel the permission to do this. That's right. Being remote, global companies, COVID, whatever, zombie apocalypse, we have to do things remote. And we're doing this like you and I are we're talking, but also we can see each other. I, you know, already got a connection because I can see what's going on with you. I can see violent. We lose 65% of the conversation when we can't see people. It Well, 60. And then 65% if we're even not in the same room, you can't see them. It, it is about people. This is about building community. We're at work, most of us, more than we're with our, at home with our families. You know, just straight people time. So how do we fix that? How do we, why, why are we so bad at work about communicating with each other, but we're pretty good with our families? Look at people, bring them together either virtually or in person, because that's what it's really about. Yeah, we can plan all day long, all quarter long, emails and on our program boards or whatever we want to call them, you know, in, in tools and, and find dependencies and, and link this child item to et cetera. But like you said, you, yes, of course, you call me anytime now, unless I'm asleep. But we can chat and we've developed, started developing that relationship. And now we've started developing our community in terms of what we're trying, the value we're trying to deliver. And that's what's really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, develop your community, not only your team. Absolutely. Great message. Yusef, unfortunately, we're getting close to the end. Thank you for sharing all of this with us. But uh, where can people find you and more about the work that you're doing? I've got a blog um, on our company, Elaborate. It's spelled E-L-A-B-O-R number eight. Just look for our safe practice blog. The message I put on there are folks on safe, but you can use the, the messaging and the, the information for anything you do because it's just agile really in general i'm on linkedin you can look me up there uh, i always spell my name uh, professionally with my middle initial so use of tifa whom because i've got a couple cousins uh and one of them is this brilliant traumatic brain injury doctor and although i would be i have been flattered that i was confused with him i'm not that smart so it's use of tifa whom on uh, linkedin yeah, absolutely. We'll put the link on the show notes so people can easily find you and, and connect with you. And uh, why not ask some follow-up questions? Yusef, it's been a pleasure. So thank you very much for your generosity with your time and your knowledge. Thank you. It's been a pleasure I've listening to the podcast for so long. I finally am able to give back to the community. One more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is over. But there's a lot more we have to share. We have developed our own membership site where you find a community of active and engaged Scrum Masters. 
In this site, you get access to exclusive content and get to interact with us, your podcast hosts, as well as the best Scrum Masters in the world. Join us at scrummastertoolbox.com forward slash podcast and keep this podcast free of advertising. See you next week for one more week full of Scrum Master tips and tricks. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.